Hello everyone and welcome back to Immortal Cities, Children of the Nile. So, uh, turns out at the end of the last episode when I said we were temporarily done with the tutorials, um, turns out I was a liar. <laughs> because this, this episode we're actually going to go ahead and talk about the military, or the military faction that you can build. Um, so, like most of your citizens, uh, the military needs access to all the basic amenities, um, uh, shopkeepers, temples, hospitals, things of that nature. Um, they, they, since they are, they are government workers, they are government, so they do need to be paid by a baker. So you need to have a baker somewhere nearby. Um, soldiers, as it says right there in the description, they, can, they, they are broken down into two basic categories. Uh, internal defense as um, city guards and external um, offense, I think? Yeah, external offense, like, like an actual military that goes abroad and, and fights for you. Um, and then the, the military is broken, the, the, the external military that you send out to fight in campaigns is actually broken down into uh, three smaller subcategories, spearmen, archers, and charioteers. Now, um, when choosing where you want to place your military camp, uh, placement is very, very important because, like I said, you kind of want it near other amenities, So, um, but you also want them close to weapon shops and armor shops so that they can be best prepared to go out and, and, and attack, you know. So their survivability is, is maxed out. Um, really with this map, since it's an easy map, it makes it very easy on us. Um, when placing your weapon shops, um, weapon shops use the Akatia tree, this thing, or the Akasia tree, the same thing that weapon makers use. Um, they just make their spears and their bows out of the wood from the Akasia tree. Uh, charioteers, however, I believe make their chariots out of cedar, so we won't be able to make any of those for this map because, to the best of my knowledge, there's no way to get cedar. There might be, but I'm, I might be remembering it wrong. Uh, the armors, the armor, um, armor smiths, although they're not really smiths, I guess. Um, you can order a weapon shop to make armor, and they need access to prey animals such as. Come on, buddy, I know you're right there. This one, a gazelle. So if you could, so like. Um, gazelle and cattle are their their option to make. It says fish as well, but come on, you can't make leather armor out of fish. So cattle or cows and gazelle. You need to have a weapons maker close to them so that they can go out and make armor. And it just so happens we have both of these relatively close to where we set up our city. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a military camp um, pretty pretty close to right here. I'll go ahead and get the basic layout. So I mean like. If, if you don't have any of these close to your city, you actually have to make um, a smaller outpost, you know, and it requires, instead of requiring just the one commander to lead your tribesmen or to lead your, your soldiers, then you also need to have a priest out there to provide, you know, basic, you know, the basic amenities like healthcare and worship and on and on and on. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the video for now. I'm going to go ahead and something real basic and quick set up somewhere near here. Um... And then when I come back, I'll go ahead and well, I'm I'm gonna get the yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get get the basic layout set up, and then I'll be back in a bit. See you guys then. All right, okay, so I think I have a pretty good, um, re relatively good layout. I mean, like really, the, where I'm gonna put the soldiers is a little bit farther away from the shopkeepers, from the common, from the shop, from the common shops that I normally like to do. Um, but we'll have to work with it. So, the first thing you want to make sure you have. We go into government homes. We want to set up military equipment maker, and we're gonna need four of them: two making weapons, two making armor. Put one, two. There we go. Four. All right. So these two, who are right next to this acacia tree, they're gonna go ahead and make weapons, which they're set to do by default. These two are gonna go ahead and make armor. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause it while my guys build that. I'm going to go ahead and put it to regular speed. The next thing you want to do is we're going to, like, we're going to go ahead and place down the soldiers' homes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we'll go ahead and put four more here for good measure. So the soldiers' homes, the soldiers can only be men, and each soldier's barracks can house four soldiers, or three soldiers. So these eight right here are going to be spearmen, 
because what we're, what we're going to do is we need these military guys so that we can actually go ahead and do this siege right here, the Siege of Baris. And as you can see, it requires only 20 spearmen, but I like to have a little bit more plus some archers. Uh, we could assault the Fort of Baris, but it requires 200 guys and 4,000 food, and that's not really an investment I want to put. I mean, it, it comes with a lot of prestige, but that's not really an investment I want to make. So, alright, so like I said, uh, these four, well, like, by default they're set to city guards, but we don't want that. So we want these eight to be spearmen. And we want these four to be archers. Alright, and like I said before, we can also have charioteers, but I don't think we can have them this mission because as far as I know, well, for right now, we don't have any access to cedar, although we might find a trade partner later who will give us one. Now, to lead these men into battle, we need a commander. And we're going to go ahead and put right here. Now, the commander can be set to lead the city guard, the army, or the navy. Now, the army and the navy will, aren't really that huge of a difference. The only thing is, like, the army, like, he leads, you know, the soldiers into battle, and the navy commands the ships that ferry your troops to battle. Now, we don't necessarily need a navy for this mission because it is it is landbound, although, you know, if you, if you send them away on a ship, they are... It, all it really does is it boosts their combat strength, but this should be fine. So we're going to go ahead and set this guy to army. Uh, lastly, we need... A training ground for them to train in, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and put that right here. Now, the thing with the soldiers is soldiers need, at the very least, they need a weapon to go into battle, and they need to be trained. Now, a soldier is either trained or he's not trained. There's no one between. Um, oh, we also need to go ahead and throw down a baker so that they can get paid. And that's, that's the basic setup for, for the military camps. Now, the other thing that I kind of want to go into while we're doing this is I'm going to go ahead and talk about the, the, the weapons or the, the military equipment makers. Now, as you can see, they have four options. Weapons, armor, chariots, and... I'm going to say this wrong, but... Um, kopesh. Kopeshes. Now, weapons, like I said before, weapons are made out of the, the wood of the axia trees. The armor is made out of the leather of prey animals like gazelle and cows. Uh, chariots... Um, well, archers and spearmen, they just need to get a weapon from the weapon shop, but chariot charioteers need chariots from the chariot workshop. Uh, the kopeshes, or, or ko like, I, I, I'm, I really don't know how to pronounce that, I'm sorry, um, are what you think of, like, if, you, have you, if, you, if you've seen the movie The Mummy, you know those, those big curved swords that are in it, like, they, they kind of come up a little bit and they have, like, a weird curve to them? Those are kopeshes. And really all they do, all of your soldiers can have them. Archers, spearmen, um, charioteers. And you need to have access to copper and tin. And then the kopesh makers will go ahead and take those and smelt them together to make bronze and then make the kopeshes. And what that does is it really increases the, like, it, it makes, it basically just increases the survivability of your soldiers. It makes them a lot scarier in combat because, I mean, those are wicked looking blades. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, Pretty much it. If I remember right, I think the commanders can command... Uh, I want to say it's 50? It might be 30. It might only be 30 troops, in which case we have two, 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 two barracks too many. Um, but I don't recall exactly. If that's the case, then just, you know, six guys will stay home and that'll be fine. Um, <laughs> but the other thing that I want to talk about while we're doing this, although I won't, I won't build any of it right now because there's really no need to have it, um, is the city guard. And the city guard, are the only they don't really require anything. I mean, they can use a, like, they, well, the only thing they really need is a weapon. And that's it. And the city guard, you don't really have to make it this intense. City guard is only really for internal security for invading forces, uh, if you get too many vagrants who are causing too much trouble, um, and that's pretty much it. And, all, and like, the, the, way that, the way you set it up is very, very similar to this. Like, you can put them in little, like, you can put the barracks in little groups, uh, they need a commander to, to watch over them. Uh, but they also need guard posts. Now the guard posts you just kind of place in different parts of the city. And when your city guard go on duty, they'll go from one guard post and they'll patrol the streets to another guard post. And they just go back and forth between two or more of 
of, of the guard posts, and they'll just kind of, you know, they'll keep order. They'll, they'll just do what cops do. Uh, any invading armies that come in, they'll try to fight them off. If your soldiers are out of town, um, I mean, that's basically it. They're basically just for internal security. We, like I said, we don't really need them for this one because vagrants are never really that much of a problem. And there's no invading armies that are that are going to come and kill us because this is an easy camp. This, this map is an easy map. So, um, yeah, I mean, that should be it for this. I'll just go ahead and cut this for now, and I'll come back once the... Uh, you know, these buildings are all built up and the soldiers are trained and we'll go ahead and send them off to war. So, see you guys in a bit. Um, even though none of this is, is you know, finished being built, um, if you click on a barracks, it'll show you, you know, just like any other home view, it'll show you the guys who are in it. And like I said, it's only only males. Um, they cannot take any wives or children because they are, you know, dedicated soldiers. It'll also show you the food and the, and the common wares they have, but it'll also show you how many weapons they have and how, many, how much armor they have. So this has three and three one for each soldier. Uh, later on, it'll also indicate how many guys are trained, but that won't happen until this is built. We'll come back once that happens. See you guys then. All right, so here we go. All the barracks are built. Built. Um, they're fully stocked with guys. Most of, almost all of them have weapons and armor. A large portion of them are trained. Uh, we are missing, like, where is it? Like, yeah, here we go. Like one set of soldiers. Um, doesn't have all their gear, but you know, whatever. Um, so here we go, let's go ahead and unpause this, bring the game speed down a little bit, but let's go ahead and go to the world map. I'm going to go ahead and go to the Siege of Barius, Barus, whatever. As you can see, we have enough bricks, we have enough soldiers, we have enough food. Um, upkeep is something I'll get into in a second, but we just go ahead and do Dispatch Expedition to this site. Expedition will reach this site soon, and then we go back to the game map. And what'll happen is, is you can't just send a part of your force. When you send your military on out to go do combat, it's it's all or nothing. They all go or none of them go. You can't just split it up into groups. Um, now, real quick, while we're touching on it, this thing right here about the upkeep, what this will be is like every year we need to ha we need to send at least 40 weapons, 75 bricks, and 500 food, and we need that to keep this this expedition going. Um, there's ways to, to do that. Like, right now, we actually don't have enough of everything. So hopefully we'll kind of get that get that set up. But what you'd want to do to ensure that that does happen is when, when, you have, when you have constant exports to other sites, um, you can, you know, you can go down here to the, the resource ledger, whatever this is called, the resource report, and you can click on a anything, really. Like, we can click on weapons and it'll bring up reserve. And I can set the reserve to any number as soon as it's done saving. I can set the reserve to any number that you choose. And what'll happen is like your government as they, as they make those weapons, they will set aside like right now it's a 10. So they'll set aside 10. So if we have any less than 10, no soldiers can come and pick up any weapons from our weapons makers. But as soon as that number exceeds that, then they're free to come and get as many as they want as long as it, as long as this number never dips below 10. So yeah, I mean, that's the basics of, of exporting, or, yeah, exporting. Um, this shouldn't be too big of a problem. I think this expedition actually goes fairly quickly. But, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it here, and we will come back once this expedition either fails or succeeds. Hopefully it succeeds. So see you guys in a bit. Um, all right, so I was actually wrong about this, unfortunately. So this is actually a external um, camp, I guess. And what will happen is every year we'll send food, bricks, and weapons to this uh, outpost, and I believe every year that we do, the number required to actually siege the city of Boris uh, will go down, I think. Um, but we really don't have time to wait around for that. I'll go actually go ahead, and once we attack Boris, I'll probably show that off in a later video. But I mean, that's basically it. Um, normally fights are just kind of straight up, like straight up brawls, like you'll click on the thing to go and it'll tell you how many soldiers you have, how many are required how many uh, commanders you have for for your people. And actually, um, to kind of correct something before, I went and checked, and a commander can only command 30 troops. So the with the total number of guys we have, six would have to stay home or would just be ineffective in, in combat because, like I said, it's either all or nothing. Um, so, yeah, I probably have to delete two of these barracks, which I'll probably end up doing. Um, I might get rid of one spearman and one archer. But, yeah, so that's the, the basics of the military. 
you know, you just gotta make sure that you keep them keep them happy, just like the rest of your citizens. So, um, thank you very much. Well, uh, next time, we'll actually go ahead and go into setting up laborers camps and maybe importing. I don't know, because importing's not really that that big of a thing. It's, it, it, won't, it won't fit a whole video. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do uh, laborers camps and importing materials from external sites. So, thank you very much for watching and join me next time on Immortal Cities, Children of Nile.